Today in the joy of editing, it is black and white. I'll be doing two black and white conversions, the first with a new TK Grayscale and the second with the TK Magic Mixer. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I have these two images we'll be working on today, portraits. I never do portraits on TK Friday, so today I thought I'd do a couple here. I'll be converting these to black and white. Now these images come from Signature Edits. They're free to download. I'll link their site in the description below this video, so a shout out to Signature Edits for these images. Now as always, you can download the images and the PDF notes. They'll be in the TIFF format ready for you to edit right there in Photoshop using the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. You'll find Dropbox links in the description below this video. By the way, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, please go to the description of the video, scroll down through, you're going to find a contact me link, contact me, and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. I'd love to hear from you. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, there's a great sale going on over at Tony Kuiper's web store. You can purchase any of the TK products and save 25% off your entire purchase. To get the 25% off, just use my promo code DK15. For this entire month, DK15 equals 25% off. And when you use my promo code, I make a small commission and this helps to support my channel. So I appreciate it. The 25% off is because of the launch sale of the new TK Grayscale plugin for black and white conversions in Photoshop. It's bundled together with a Magic Mixer. If you already own the Magic Mixer, it's a free update for you. You're going to get TK Grayscale. And if you don't have the Magic Mixer, this is a good time to purchase because not only do you get the Magic Mixer, but you get TK Grayscale along with it. And don't forget, use my promo code DK15. That gives you 25% off your entire purchase. And that runs till the end of September. So this is a good time to get any TK products that you want. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I want to start out using TK Grayscale to make the black and white conversion on this image. And what we want to do is find your TK Grayscale plugin. Now you could click the plus to add a Grayscale conversion, as you can see right here. But what I like to do is work with these different color channels. I feel this is a really good starting point. So I'll click on red. This is what the red channel would look like. And this is what the green channel looks like, the blue. And then we have cyan, which is a simulated color channel in Photoshop, magenta and yellow. And the one I like the best is cyan. I like the way this woman's blouse, I believe it's called, is dark and the pants are dark, but there is a lot of nice separation between the two. And I like all the darkness going on here. It's really cool. Now, this is my vision for this image. You may have a different interpretation, and that's all well and good because we're all different. By the way, check out this intensity slider. Now, TK Grayscale controls Photoshop's black and white adjustment. Watch these sliders here when I move the intensity over. See how they change and see how the image becomes more intense with that cyan color channel. For me, I like it set at the default setting of 100, but you have all this option here. You can really play around with this stuff. By the way, if you don't see your properties panel, just click this button and your property panel will show up. As I said, I like the cyan channel, but let's say you didn't know how to take this image. You see this button right here? This is a randomizer button. Give it a click and it'll randomly go through different looks. Now you can also turn up the intensity here and you will get more dramatic changes as you go through there. Isn't that cool? Because sometimes we really don't know where we want to take an image. So you can experiment a lot here with TK Grayscale. And that's one of the beautiful things about it. Now, let's say you found a look a few steps back. That's what these buttons are for. We can go backwards or forwards and find that right look. But I like the cyan, so I'm going to click this button right here for the cyan channel. Now, the intensity is turned up, so you can just right click and that'll reset this back to 100. As I said, I like the way this black and white conversion looks with just the cyan channel, but I could come up here in the properties panel and adjust any one of these black and white adjustments. In other words, anything that is red, I can make it lighter by dragging this to the right or darker to the left or anything yellow, make it more light or darker. Same with greens or cyans or blues. 
So you have all these options as well as magenta. But in my case, like I said, right out of the gate, I like just the cyan channel. But I wanted to point that out as well. This is for fine tuning. I'm happy with my black and white conversion. Now let's move on. What I want to do is darken up this wall even more. So what I need to do is select the background. So come to the Converse CX panel, double click this button. We'll select the background. And now come up to the multi mask panel and click this button right here for a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And what I want to do here is darken the background. So I'll take the brightness slider and I'll drag it to the left over to right there, minus 74. And I do want to increase the contrast. So I'll drag this slider to the right and I'll stop right here at 50. So now that background is really dark. I can still see some of the detail in this concrete wall. So it's not totally crushed. By the way, if you click this button right here, see all the blue areas? These are areas that have been clipped. Clipping whites is a no-no, but doing a little bit of clipping in the blacks is never that harmful to an image. For this image, I like that little bit of clipping, actually. Now, this is a live clipping layer that lets us see the blue on here that's clipped. Now, you could click this button again to get rid of that live clipping, or you could come to the Combo or CX panel and click this button right here to get rid of it. We have live clipping on both the combo and the grayscale panel, as well as the magic mixer panel. Now I'm looking at the model's face and hands. The highlights are a little bit too hot, so I'd like to tone those down. We'll do some burning to do that. I'll target these areas by using a zone mask. So come up to the multi mask panel, click this button right here. And I just want to sample some of these very light areas right here in our face. I'll click OK. We can fine tune this zone mask. I think I'll tighten up that selection a little bit by moving this adjustment over. I call this the Titan slider. I think to right there should be pretty good. Maybe I'll lighten it up by taking the brightness slider and dragging it to the right a little bit to maybe right there. I'm going to output this to a burn tool. The burn tool has two sides, a left and a right. I'll use the left side. It gives you a 50% gray layer in the soft light blend mode. The right side gives you a blank pixel layer in the soft light blend mode. Either side will work here. Sometimes they matter, but not here. And now with the soft edge brush at 10% brush opacity, right now I'm at 100%. I'll type my one key. That gets me 10%. And I just want to paint over this. I'm lifting and painting, lifting and painting. I just want to like tone this down a little bit, maybe right here. And here, maybe on the hands a little bit, any of the highlights on the hands that are a little too light, it'll just target those and tone those down. And I think this should do the job right here. I'm not going too crazy on this image, but I think that's going to be good. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger, and I want to get the highlights up here on this. What is it, a sombrero? Is that what they call that? I hope I'm saying that right. Let me know in the comment section if I got this, that wrong. But I just want to tone that down a little bit, maybe back in here, right there. Now I'll shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Yeah, I think that looks much better. I went ahead and zoomed away and you see this area right here. I just want to really lower that and also this uh, spot on the nose right here. Click on this button right here, remove content aware fill. When you do that, you're going to get a remove tool. And what I want to do is just paint over here like that and get rid of that, and then just paint right on here and get rid of that little shine right there. I think that's going to be good. Now, here's a little trick for us. What we can do is take the layer opacity, let's take it the whole way off, and then let's build it up slowly, because I want to keep a little bit of that, but I don't want the full amount. So I think right there, see, we still see that little shine on the nose and a little shine up there, which looks good. And that's really all I want to do. Now I'll click this button to go back to fit the screen, and this is our edit for the first image. Let me go ahead and click this button on the combo or CX panel. We started out here and we end up here, but I really like it. And I do hope you give this edit a try. Now let's move on to this image right here. This is a cool image. I think it's going to look great in black and white. For this image, we're going to use the magic mixer. So I'll click in the magic mixer. And again, I'll go through my color channels. Here's red, green, blue, cyan. I like cyan again, magenta and yellow. I'm going to use cyan. Now, if you want to, you can tweak these sliders like the cyan red slider. You can make your reds lighter by moving this to the right or to the left to make them darker. But you notice the other sliders move in tandem. And the reason for that, we always want this to maintain 100, typically if we can. 
and the Magic Mixer helps you to do that. It makes working with Photoshop's Channel Mixer very simple. I'm not going to get into the weeds on it. I have other videos you could check out on my YouTube channel. But you can move any of these sliders and get different looks on the image, okay? So that's all well and good, and that's nice. But for this image, I'm going to settle with just the cyan channel. But I will do some fine tuning, and I'll use a black and white adjustment layer to do that. So click this button on the Magic Mixer panel, and now we have a black and white adjustment layer. And I'll use this for fine tuning. So I have the cyan channel and now what i want to do is i think i want to darken the red tones up a little bit maybe to right there like a minus 12. now let's open up the yellows make the yellows a little bit lighter so i'm going to take this slider move it to the right i don't want to go too much maybe over to about right here let's see what the green slider does for us maybe i'll move that over a little bit and let's try cyan's just fine tune these a little bit and how about blue yeah, blue darkens up the coat, and I think I want that coat darker to bring out more contrast. Maybe to about here, and let's see magenta. Uh, magenta right about there. And now I'll shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after, and I like that. I think that's a nice fine tuning. Now the way I use the Magic Mixer, I use the Magic Mixer to get a rough black and white conversion by adjusting these sliders or trying the different channels. And you also have a contrast adjustment. You can increase contrast or brightness. And then after I do that, I generally will click on this button and adjust the color luminosity levels like I just did, just to fine tune the black and white conversion. By the way, this black and white adjustment is actually working on color, not black and white due to this luminosity blend mode. I just want to point that out. If I shut off the Magic Mixer layer, you can see the image is still in color, and this black and white adjustment is actually controlling how light or dark these colors will be in the image. And that's because the black and white adjustment layer is set to the luminosity blend mode. I'll go ahead and turn the Magic Mixer layer back on by clicking the eye, and let's make the Magic Mixer layer active so we can do some further editing because I want to build on top of this. I'd like to lighten up her face, so here's what we're going to do. Something a little different, and this is something new to Photoshop. Click on the Object Selection tool, and then come up here. See where it says Select People? I'm going to click right here and click on this person right here. And now what I can do is I can select Facial Skin and click Apply. And now we selected the facial skin. And what I want to do to make an adjustment, I want to lighten up the face a bit. We're going to use a color grading tool, so I'll click this button right here on the multi mask panel. And now we'll click on the midtone button. I just want to lighten up the midtones a little bit, and we'll take that over to right there, plus 13. Let's click on the shadow button. Let's just enrich those shadows a bit. I'll take this to the left. We'll take it over to right there, minus 15. And now let's click on Highlights. And I do want to open up the Highlights. We'll drag this over to right there, 39. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. See how we can nicely lighten up the face? And now let's bring out some beautiful detail in the hat and on the clothes, but leave the hair out. Here's how we can do it. We'll use a TK action. If your actions are an open, click a TK button on the Combo or CX panel. Look for Clarity. Click on Clarity. A high pass filter dialog comes up. Right now we're set at a 10 pixel radius. I'm going to bump this up to right there, 40.2 and click OK. Now we've brought out a lot of detail. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after, but I only want it on the clothes and on the hat. Click on the object selection tool again and click on select people. Click on the girl, click hat, coat, and upper clothes and click apply. And now we've selected all those areas. Pretty neat, right? And now here's a little tip for you. Normally I would use the layer mask calculator and apply this selection to a mask on the clarity layer. But a quick way is just click this button right here to add a mask on the combo or CX panel. And just like that, we're only applying the detail to the coat, the hat, and the clothes. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here is after. Now let's take a look at this mask. If we come up to the Combo or CX panel, click this button, and look at the beautiful job the mask has done. Isn't that cool? By the way, for the object selection tool, you see this little gear right here? Give that a click. And note everything I have checked on here. This is how I set mine up. But make sure you have Find People Details on Canvas. So make sure you have that checked on. And make sure you have Auto Refresh ticked on as well. 
or this technique will not work. Now I want to darken up the background a bit, so what we'll do is come to the Converse AX panel, double click this button, that'll select the background. I want to use the color grading tool to make this adjustment. My color grading tool panel is still open, so we can click the plus. That adds another color grading layer with that mask applied. I want to darken the background, so I'll click the midtone button, and I'll drag the brightness slider to the left to darken up the midtones right there, minus 19. And now I'm going to click on the highlight button. I want to reduce the highlights. I'll take this slider and drag it to the left. This is a brightness slider, and I'll take it over to right there, minus 12. Now let's work in the shadows. I'll click on the shadow button. I want to darken up the shadows a little bit, and we'll take this over to right there, minus 37. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. I like it. Now, the last thing I want to do is add a vignette. So if your TK actions are not open, click a TK button, click on vignette. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up. I always just click OK. Note the default layer opacity of 30% which you could change if needed. In other words, you can make it darker by dragging the opacity to the right or less if you move it to the left. But I think I'm going to leave it at 30%. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and now here is after. I really like the vignette. Now that is the entire edit. I'm gonna come to my combo panel or you could go to the CX panel, click this button right here. This is the overall before. And this is the after. I really love this image in black and white. I think it looks so much better in black and white than it does in color, in my opinion. By the way, if you'd like to tint your black and white pictures with a color, you can do that on both TK Grayscale and the Magic Mixer. Look for this button, give it a click, and you're defaulted at like a sepia color here. Now you can pull the saturation back if you want to, if you want to tint your image, right? And then you can also adjust the hue. You can make that tint, any tint that you want. I usually like like a selenium tone, something like around here. I would really pull back on the saturation to maybe something like that, or maybe a sepia tone like that. And then if you want to, on the multi-mask panel right now, the color grading tool is in the way. Click the X, click the Edit Blend Diff button, and maybe you only want to apply that to shadows or midtones or just your highlights, whatever you want to do. So you have that option too. But I like this in just black and white. Well, there it is, everyone. Another TK Friday comes to an end. I did two black and white conversions today. The first with the TK Grayscale. The second with the TK Magic Mixer. I love both of these Photoshop plugins. And don't forget, they're on sale to the end of the month. Use my promo code DK15 and save 25% off everything at the TK Web Store. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.